Now in this video, I'm gonna be talking about central bank digital currencies and why they will fail. Using Wi-Fi without NordVPN could mean sharing your private stuff with more people than you think. NordVPN, online security starts with a click. Businesses need a platform that allows people to access and manage their office workstation from anywhere and anytime. WebConnect does just that. Our browser-based desktop platform enables you to seamlessly migrate your office into a private cloud, giving you total control of your desktop, files, and important data. It's encrypted end-to-end -end connection, making it totally secure and ensuring peace of mind for users and administrators alike. Put WebConnect to the test and transform the way you work remotely. Hi everybody, this is Crypto Rich, working with you to get rich with crypto, filling our pockets with crypto profits. In this video, I'm going to be talking about central bank digital currencies. I'm going to explain what they are and why they fail. And we want them to fail because they are such a threat to our liberty and our freedom. Now, before I go into that, please subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Crypto Rich YT. Join my official Telegram announcements channel. I'll have the link to those in the description below. And also, if you're watching this on YouTube, come over to bit.ly slash Crypto Rich 3 speak or bit.ly slash crypto rich odyssey i post more videos there the type of which youtube is a little bit sensitive to and i'm shadow banned on youtube so please do support my work on censorship resistant platforms like three speak and odyssey by the way if you're watching this on rumble well you're going to find more of my material on odyssey and on three speak so what are central bank digital currencies i'll tell you that in a moment but for this article i'm indebted to alex craner and I am going to be recording a video with him on, and Tom Luongo on Saturday the 14th of October and it'll go out probably on the Sunday or the Monday. So make sure you subscribe and you don't miss that. Hopefully Alexander Mercurius of the Duran will turn up. Don't know because I know he, I do know he's dealing with a lot. He's very, very busy with the work that they do in the Duran. Now, Alex's article I really, really liked. I think it speaks to the human spirit which will defeat CBDCs. But let me start by saying what CBDCs are. So CBDCs are a creation of the WEF. And we know that the WEF and Davos and those globalists, they're not really looking out for our best interests. They're looking out for their own best interests. A CBDC is a central bank digital currency issued by the government straight the plan is that it'll go straight into your own wallet your own digital wallet which will be connected to a biometric digital id so the wallet and you will be connected now cbdc's will be programmable and they are closed and controlled by another agency they are centralized so the government will be able to say hey you have exceeded your quota of meat this year or this week so you can't use it to purchase meat or you can't make any purchases 15 minutes walk away from your home which is how it connects with 15 minute cities or as they've already said that they're going to connect it to a carbon tracker i.e something that's going to measure the carbon dioxide emissions related to the purchases that you make. Now, this is why they're all pushing carbon dioxide as the critical element when it comes to climate change, when really carbon dioxide, when you look into it, is plant food. And carbon dioxide is not a bigger, bigger factor when it comes to the climate compared to all the other factors, which you can discover if you go to, say, cleantill.org and other websites which the mainstream media don't talk about. So CBDC, central bank digital currencies, will allow the government to track every single purchase that we make. And they'll be able to take taxes and fines at source out of our wallets. So they really do represent the ultimate in digital feudalism and they will fail. And why will they fail? Well, let's have a look at what Alex has to say about this. Over the last few months, I've been asked about CBDCs in a number of podcasts interviews. The questions genuinely reflect the unease and anxiety about the prospect of finding ourselves in a totalitarian dystopia. That's right, who wants to find themselves in a totalitarian dystopia? But the problem with programmable CBDCs is that they will fail for a number of reasons. First off, development of a viable system of administering people's accounts with all the permitting rules, quotas, restrictions and challenges and appeals will prove far too ambitious a project to say nothing about managing its evolution and keeping it secure. While such systems are conceptually possible, in all likelihood, they will degenerate into an unmanageable morass. Now here what Alex is saying, I think, 
is that it's just too complex a project for the government, for any government, to undertake and create so that it's effective, um, hacker-proof, that it connects with everything that it needs to connect with. Think of all the points of sale machines it's going to have to connect with. They're going to have to make sure that it has no flaws or bugs or anything like that. It's incredibly complex. And if I think of the challenges that Tony Blair's new Labour government had with creating a, a, system, a computer system within the NHS that spoke to all the different elements of the NHS and stuff, that was just impossible and incredibly expensive. The CBDC is far more ambitious than that. So he's saying it's gonna have all sorts of problems. Then the other point is that if you impose on the people a system of exchange that's too complicated and too restrictive, they will naturally create and gravitate to gray and black markets. Now these tend to develop very rapidly, offering close to all of the goods and services that meet people's needs, which are unmet in the state sanctioned markets. Black markets then become irresistibly attractive since they'll function as true free and competitive marketplaces unencumbered by government's bureaucratic red tape. They'll be attractive to consumers and profitable for entrepreneurs. See, CBDCs are going to attempt to con constrain and contain the human spirit. But the human spirit, it kind of leaks out. People will find workarounds, just like people find workarounds in um, prisons, you know, where they're not able to use money to exchange with each other. They use cigarettes or they, you know, I read an account of where in one prison they were using tins of mackerel. Tins of mackerel, uh, they're fungible, they are durable, they're portable, and they represented an exchange of value system within that prison. The same thing will happen with CBDCs. And it has already happened that CBDCs have failed in one particular country. We're gonna talk about that in a moment. But imagine, you know, you wanna buy steak from your local butcher, but your CBDC allowance means because you had too much steak the week before that you're not allowed to have steak this week because they want you eating the bugs. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna find a workaround. That might be you trade your time in some way. Perhaps the butcher has a need for something else or what could very easily happen is people will start using local items for bartering. Something like tins of mackerel, or it might even be some of the decentralized, privacy-focused cryptocurrencies, and I'll talk about that towards the end of this video. Another problem with CBDCs is that governments won't be able to collect any taxes on the black market transactions, which will make the government's fiscal position go from very bad to much, much worse. Now, once people grow accustomed to or even depend upon the black markets, they become very difficult to uproot. Enforcement might only work very marginally, but it won't change the outcome. Now, one of the things I'm reminded of is the Haveli system of money transfer that operates in Pakistan. So if I wanted to send money to Pakistan, I can go to a Haveli trader in Britain and I give him or her the money, let's say a thousand dollars. That thousand dollars stays there. They then communicate with a counterpart in Pakistan who hands over the thousand dollars in Pakistani rupees or even thousand dollars to whoever I want it to go to, say a family member in Pakistan. And the whole system, I think it operates in Afghanistan as well, is built on trust and it bypasses the banking system and it bypasses the fees that are charged by, by banks. So then you're able to have money move. Now it could be possible in a local system that you have something similar where there's CBDCs, people start issuing their own forms of local currency. And we do have decentralized cryptocurrencies. Now the authority's ability to enforce an onerous restrictive system will easily be overwhelmed by the population's existential need to exchange everyday goods and services they require. Today, nearly half of Venezuela's economy depends on black markets. In Argentina, they account for about 35% of the GDP. And this is not because the authorities in those nations wished it to be so. They're simply powerless to stop it. Even in the developed world, there's a limit to what the population will put up with, as we saw in, with trucker protests in Canada and the Blade Runners who are dismantling the state surveillance system, as it doesn't conform to the people's community standards. 
So just look at this. So there is Sadiq Khan. This is a mock-up of a Facebook post. We have removed your post. We may remove the post below because it doesn't follow the Blade Runners community standards. Now the Blade Runners are a group of unknown people, activists you could say, vandals, vigilantes, freedom fighters, whatever, who are going around dismantling the camera system, the surveillance system that's being set up in London as part of the ultra low emission scheme. The CBDC was tried in Nigeria and it failed. It ended in a massive failure. In October 2021, a public referendum was held on the introduction of a CBDC to replace cash. Even though 99.5% of Nigerians voted against the CBDC, the then president of Nigeria, Muhammadu Buhari, issued a decree that the CBDC project would go ahead regardless. <laughs> so get this, so they have a referendum. 0.5% of the population vote yes. And they're probably the ones who are going to be, uh, who are in the government, I suppose, or who are going to benefit in some way from the CBDC. So 0.5% yes say yes, we want to have a CBDC. 99.5% say no, and the government say we're going to go ahead with it anyway. So what happened? Well, the government in December 2022 moved to eliminate cash altogether. And the implementation of Nigeria's, Nigeria's CBDC, the e-Nera, was extremely important. It was intended as a showcase of success to be replicated in all nations. And the project was helped along with the best advice by foreign experts from the IMF, the World Economic Forum, and the Bureau of Industry and Security. The currency itself would be based on the Hyperledger fabric, a platform for, get this, distributed ledger solutions underpinned by a modular architecture delivering high degrees of confidentiality, resiliency, flexibility, and scalability. Able to accommodate the con complexity and intricacies across an economic system. This is the kind of language that Alex says that will get anyone's confidence pumped. So. The governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin M. Faile, I hope I pronounced his name correctly, announced that by the end of January 2023, Nigeria would transition fully from fiscal cash, Nera, to e-Nera, the nation's CBDC. The deadline was subsequently extended to February the 10th. The people of Nigeria had to transfer all their cash holdings to the Central Bank of Nigeria, which would then convert them to individual e-Nera balances. When February the 10th arrived, about 80% of the people found themselves still with no central bank nearer bank accounts, and they were now holding worthless banknotes and unable to procure the basic necessities of life. Soon, many small businesses that relied on cash payments shut down because their customers ran out of cash and they had no more money to pay for their purchases. On the 16th of February, violent riots erupted and some state governments filed lawsuits against the central bank, demanding that the bank allow the people the choice to use the new CBDC and the old Naira banknotes. Here's how Polish journalist Jan, Jan Fior described the way Nigerian people sought to adjust to the new situation. Adopting an, alter an alternative currency, matchsticks in this case, and beginning to form black markets. In response to refusals to accept their old cash invalidated at the end of January, people without bank accounts, legal cash, or any savings restorted, resorted to traditional methods, barter and trade credit. Matchstick holders exchanged them for yams with farmers. Soap producers traded for fuel. And small business holders extended longer credit terms to their contractors. Teachers and cleaners from local schools sought help, mainly food from the families of their students. And the consequences of this failure? Well, there were elections scheduled for 24th February. And of course, Muhammadu Buhari was set to add office. The new president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, restored the validity of the old currency upon his inaugurate. Inauguration, and on 10th of June, the CBN governor M. Faile was arrested. The government's ill advised experiment only lasted for 108 days before it collapsed. Of course, the IMF and WF advisors will take in their lessons learned and try again in another country, but they will almost certainly fail again. In the process, their track record of failure will pull the rug from under their confidence and they'll find it increasingly harder to find central banks, bankers and government leaders willing to risk political suicide like Nigeria's ex-president Buhari or prison time like the ex-central bank governor M. Faili. Now, the current mon monetary system is going to collapse and will have to be replaced. However, the central bankers' ambitions to create some form of digital dystopia 
and gain total control of a society are already proving to be delusional fantasies that can't be and won't be sustainable in the real world. A new monetary system will have to be based on honest, sound money. Now, one of the things about Alex that he he admit, admits himself, right, is that he is an optimist. But you have to be an optimist because if we thought that CBDCs are going to come and enslave us all and we're going to lose that battle for freedom, well, what's the point of struggling? We have to believe. We have to believe that our struggle for freedom will prevail. We have to resist and the growing numbers of people who, will, who, will, who are waking up, waking up and joining the resistance movement, joining the pro freedom movement, will accelerate the collapse of the whole Greece, Great Reset project, including the collapse of CBDCs. You know, I thought that what's gonna happen in more technically advanced countries like Sweden or the United Kingdom or Canada, where there's more people that are banked, people will still create their own black markets. People will still find workarounds as they're finding workarounds with the um, ULES cameras in London. And let me show you this very important workaround. I urge you to watch this video. Our governments are using our tax and other revenues to build digital prisons, 15 minute cities, and the Great Reset. By withholding our taxes, we are engaging in peaceful protests that deprives the government of revenue and makes it way more expensive for them to pursue their nefarious designs to imprison us. This is a 16 minute video where Chris Coverdale, anti-war campaigner, explains a system whereby we can legally withhold our taxes. Link in the description below or go to bit.ly slash tax revolt to or lowercase and with the number two. Please share this and pass this on. Now I said earlier that people may use cryptocurrencies in order to bypass the CBDC system and Nigeria has a very high very high number proportion of population using Bitcoin so I'm sure that helped. Now there's two cryptocurrencies in particular that I think offer really great privacy features. Bitcoin isn't one of them because you can track the transactions. One is Monero which everybody knows about but the problem with Monero is that it takes ages for the transactions to get approved and to get confirmed. Plus, it's not as secure as Pirate Chain, which in my opinion, and I am one of the voluntary crew at Pirate Chain, is the most anonymous cryptocurrency. A truly private, decentralized blockchain. Transition times, transaction times are only about a minute or so. And right now with the bear market in altcoins, it's dirt, dirt cheap. You, if you want to get Pirate Chain, you can do so from these exchanges. Trade Ogre, I think, has the largest liquidity and there's no KYC. It is a, a centralized exchange. Polarity has no KYC and it's a decentralized exchange. And then you can hold it on your mobile phone in the Skull Island wallet. Now, I'll link to the website, which is pirate.black in the description below, so you can check this all out. But get ready now. Be prepared now. Don't wait it till it's too late because all they're doing is restricting our freedoms further and further and further and further. So we got to be prepared. Central bank digital currencies will fail and they will fail as a function of our coordinated effort, of our resistance and our desire and commitment to keep alive the human spirit. This is Crypto Rich signing out. Comments, questions, let me know in between now and when I see you next. Please keep filling your pockets with freedom and do watch out for my recording with Tom Luongo and Alex Craner and perhaps, perhaps, perhaps Alexander Mercurius. Thank you so much for watching. All the best. Bye-bye.